Cliff Miller here with Pure Car Stories. I'm sitting here at SEMA 22 with Gary Gilman. We're uh, talking about a 1950 Chevy pickup truck. 56, 56. excuse me. And you said it was a 3100? 3100 series, big back window truck. How old were you when you started on this vehicle here? That's, that's uh, I've got nine and a half years in the truck and I'm 78 now. So back up 10 years, I was 68, 69 when I started the project. Awesome. So what I wanted to do, I decided on I decided on the model I wanted, and I wanted Chevy, and I wanted a big back window, and I wanted to do a truck. And uh, the first thing I was going to do was chop it because I always felt that the roofs on these were too high. They set up so quite high. If you look at one profile wise, I always thought that GM had them roof too high, but they were they were artisan trucks, so they had headroom in them. So you could get in and out with your clothing, your work clothes, your hat, and all of that. So it made sense uh, from a marketing standpoint. So what I wanted to do was chop a truck, and so I started shopping for what uh, you know, 55 or 56 step side. That's what I wanted. I found that cab in Arizona actually, and that's the cab that's on the truck now. I bought the cab and I took it back to Montana. And then I approached my glass man uh, about cutting laminated glass if I chopped the top and the difficulty that that would entail because I knew I knew that cutting curved laminated glass was going to be a major problem and I couldn't do that. I'd have to rely on some, uh, someone else's skill. And I knew a really good glass man. So I hauled the cab home, contacted him, showed him what I had and he said I'll I'll give it a shot and uh, so I said fine so then I put the cab on a spinner and I cut the roof off so I went about the chop and I chopped the top three and a half inches and in the process of doing that when the top was off I replaced the floor the tow board and the firewall so I took all of the rusted uh, hinge pockets corner pockets, I took that all out and replaced all of the rest of the metal. Then, uh, then I got the top back on it and then I called my glass guy and then we said about, I say we, I built the templates for it and then he and I, I didn't cut the glass but I helped him with the fitting and uh, the process of redoing and uh, grind fit, grind fit. And uh, long story short, uh, he broke three windshields before that one was successfully cut. The rear windshield, the rear glass, which is also curved, fortunately, was done in the very first cut. Wow. And uh, that's the piece that's in the truck now. The glass was in. All I, I still only had the cab. Then I started shopping for fenders, hood, box, and those individual uh, items. And I went to my friend Rick Moore. And uh, and told him to build a frame. Awesome. Yeah, which he did. Then I put the cab on the frame, and uh, I had a problem right off the bat because my firewall did not clear uh, the engine, and so I had to pull the cab back off and cut the, the firewall back out of it and redo that. That was a that was a mistake I made, but uh, we healed up. From it. Did a wonderful job. So the engine and powertrain and suspension yeah. you got, what is that? The the frame is custom by uh, by Moore, and then the engine is LT1 from General Motors, crate motor, and the transmission is eight speed automatic, and it came. I I bought it as a package, which anybody can do that. It's it's, you know, it's not rocket science. And it comes with the computer, the wiring harness, and the whole electronic package. So you get the whole thing as a unit. And Rick set up the uh, the uh, motor mounts, transmission mounts to accept that engine and transmission. Rear end is uh, C4 Corvette, nice. and that came. Rick put that in the frame when he, when he built the frame. He he put the Corvette. It's used Corvette suspension. And he put that all together. I cleaned it all up and shined up the aluminum and so on and so forth, but he assembled it. Or disassembled it, assembled it. And then he delivered the rolling chassis to me with the engine transmission in it. 
and then I started to reassemble the truck piece by piece. The first thing was the cab, and uh, once the cab was on it, uh, then I think the next thing I did was I purchased a box from Marque Manufacturing, and then I installed the box, cabs on the frame, installed the box, it got in position, and cut in the wheel tubs for the wide wheels. It's got 12 inch wides on the back, and of course you got to have a tub to, for the clearance. So I did all of that, and uh, then I believe I moved to the front of the truck, and then I started with the uh, front fenders. Uh, the left one's a 55, and the right one, no, the left one's a 57, the right one is a 55. And the hood is, I'm not sure, 55 or 6, but I got the front fenders on it, and then uh, I put the hood on, and I had a major problem. The problem was the hood had grown. In other words, the hood yes. stuck up way too high after that in relation yep. to the roof. So when that happened, I stepped back and I thought, holy smokes, I've got a problem here. So at that point, I decided I was going to have to pancake the hood. In other words, drop the hood down oh, huh. so that the, 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 uh, the elevation, the side elevation of the truck, if you're looking at the profile, the top and the hood flow. Yes. And they didn't flow with the original hood. So I cut the top of the hood off and I dropped it an inch and a half in the front and then you taper it back, they call it pancaking, but you have an inch and a half drop in the front, and then as you come around the corners of the hood and come back, then you come back to zero, because you can't you can't lower the hood where the cowl is at, because right. then it wouldn't fit. And that took me, I, you know, I probably worked six or eight months just on the hood. So that was the next thing I ran into, and then, uh, when I had the hood all chopped apart, I decided that I wanted to tilt the hood forward. I just started building the hinges by hand, trial and error, and I threw probably half of everything away at least once until I finally got everything so that the geometry worked. At first it would bind up, one side would go down too low and back and forth. And so I just kept at it until I finally got the hinges so they work pretty darn good. So those are the hinges you see today. I had them pro plated, but they're all hand built. I bought a 55 passenger car bumper, uh, a one piece from a firm back east. I can't remember the name of the firm I bought it from. And then uh, I built bumper braces uh, to fit the frame and get the curvature right so that it cleared the front fenders and then I built balances to fill in the spaces in the front bumper uh, between the fender and the 55. Once that was done <clears throat> then I had a big I got a, had a big open area where the grill went where the grill was at and of course that had to be filled up right and because I'm an old school hot rodder uh, I always like the the Corvette stuff. So oh, I uh, I rounded up two, I think 57 and a 58 grill bar, and then I I took the two grill bars that were were fairly short because Corvette grill opening isn't very wide. Well, this is pretty wide. The truck is. So I took those two bars and then I I, I joined them, put them together, and got my my ends so they fit the opening just about right and then I took every other tooth out of those bars and I ended up with seven teeth. Then I decided that I put the rear fenders on but I, did, I didn't like the opening for the rear fenders because they were too big. Too long and, compared to the... Yeah they were too long and I had the 20 inch wheel which filled up the wheel well, the rear wheel well pretty well but I still wasn't happy with that. So what I did is I cut the fender out. I cut a section right across the top and then down each side, pulled it out, took five inches out of the center of that, and then put it back in the fender. And that left me a two and a half inch gap in front of the wheel and behind the wheel. And then I filled that in and I tightened that hole 
that whole housing up so it fits real snug around the wheel. Then I moved to the back of the truck and I wanted to uh, I wanted to copy a Z06 Corvette in the back. And I happened to have a Z06, so I took all the measurements off the back of my car and I bought a generic roll pan and I took the measurements and I cut that generic roll pan all apart. And then I built the housing for the exhaust. I built the, the two of the exhaust tips, I built that. And then I built, uh, built a template and then just fit it under the back there and kind of pieced it all together and then I built that housing that you see right there with the exhaust in it. I built that out of sheet metal of course and then put the whole thing together and stitched it all up and built the bracketing for the underside to attach to the to the frame rails uh, under the box. I threw the drip rail away and eliminated that so that adds to the, the lines of the truck and makes it cleaner. That vent window out, and then we put a solid piece of glass in there, so it, it makes a little cleaner look. And uh, I think it, it smooths the lines out. Gary, yeah, really, I appreciate your time. This is one of the most striking trucks I've ever seen. I oh, thought for you. sure it was a custom builder. And then uh, when, no. when uh, Rick told us that you were kind of this wonderful hobby builder who did this all yourself, <laughs> we had to take time to get your fair car story. So thank you so much well, for sharing you. that. And, uh, I appreciate it. We love it. It's, it's really a beautiful well, truck. You've done a great it. job. Well, I'm self-taught, and uh, if I can do it, anybody can. It's fun. Awesome. That's the attitude. Thank you from Pure Car Stories.